Ah, it's been a little while, wall crawlers, but allow me to welcome you once again to a bumbling and stumbling episode of the Mediocre spider man Ouch! Oh. Ah. Um, anyway, all you Arachno fans over on the Flophouse VIP Patreon, major voices loud and clear in regards to today's subject, which will be the fighting game history of our beloved bastion of great responsibility. From 90s 2D arcade games to 3D arena battlers down to the dregs of mobile gaming, Spider-Man has unquestionably had the most robust career of any Marvel hero within the realm of button bashing. <laughs> or uh, uh, one of the most robust. <laughs> so crack your knuckles and get ready to take one for JJ as we explore the wild history of Spidey in fighting games. Things kick off uh, incredibly well with 1995's Marvel Superheroes, Capcom's attempt at broadening their license with Marvel to include more characters beyond just the X-Men. Spidey was absolutely given extra special attention by Capcom's artists here, as MSH definitively set the template on how the character would look and feel in all subsequent games. The odd but still appropriate idle stance, his animations, his special moves, his quips, it's all there and it's all absolutely perfect. Perfect. You can utilize his webs in both ball and throw form, anti-air with ease via the spider sting, and stylishly KO his enemies with the mighty Maximum Spider, something Cammy would later replicate with her Killer Bee Assault. There was just a certain je ne sais quoi in how Capcom brought him to life via their CPS2 arcade board. It was just a bit more fun and exciting than, say, Captain America or Iron Man. As for his ending, well, he makes it home to MJ, who then randomly tells him she's preggers! Peter's like, that's cool, I guess, and uh, that's it. It would be a little funny if he just left as soon as she dropped that bomb on him. He'd be all like, fuck this shit, I'm out. Overall though, Marvel's superheroes represented a huge leap from the last time the webbed wonder appeared in an arcade game, which was the 1991 beat em up. And uh, yeah, Capcom sure did a bit more justice to the character than Sega. It only made sense for Capcom to then squeeze out another game from their Versus series after the monstrous success of X-Men vs Street Fighter, and Spidey, as one of the strongest representatives from the superhero side, was obviously included. While he was left largely unchanged from his first appearance, except for adopting the various tag mechanics, he was given a new super attack, the Crawler Assault, which is a tidy little rushdown combo which covers a lot of horizontal distance. Armored Spider-Man is also included in this one as a secret character, and as a huge fan of this costume, I absolutely marked out to this the first time I saw it, and still do today, quite frankly. While his sprite doesn't physically change, and it's just a different color palette, it's still close enough to the real thing at first glance. Also, in a rather clever move, Capcom gave him one hit of super armor so he works a bit like the bigger fighters, but to balance that out, he does less overall damage than the red and blue original. While all the secret fighters get a stock congratulations screen, in default Peter Man's ending, he swings home to MJ, apologizes for something, being late I guess, but whatever it was, MJ thankfully forgives him for the vague faux pas, and uh, we're out. Wait, wait, hold up, is MJ still pregnant? What happened to that? It, it's been like a year since the last game. Wait, if you're both in this room, then who's watching the baby? While it often gets overshadowed by its own sequel, many fans still have a soft spot for the original clash of superheroes. Spidey didn't see much evolution in this one either, but he gained yet another hyper combo, this time the ultimate web throw, which I think is a bit more iconic than Crawler Assault. It is notable that MVC also finally introduced Venom into the mix, and Capcom's sprite artists and animators went absolutely ham on him, and honestly had a more unique vision on how he would attack when compared to what was seen in the comics or animated cartoons. I mean, just look at this shit. 
Endings were also done differently this time around, being made of in-game sprites on backgrounds rather than traditional still frames. In his, no matter who Spidey teams up with to take on the mighty Onslaught, please replace Kang with Onslaught in the MCU, I said what I said, he just takes a photo with said partner and claims he desperately needs the photo for cold hard cash, no doubt to pay for the mysterious phantom baby that MJ supposedly gave birth to. Now, I think it may be prudent to take a little break from Capcom here, because while their take on the Web Slinger is amazing, some would say spectacular, there are ones that are uh, slightly less so. In X-Men Mutant Academy 2, Spidey was included as a secret character. Duh, why you may ask? Well, because at that time, Activision had acquired the license to make standalone titles for both X-Men and Spider-Man, which gave them the opportunity to cross-promote, which they unashamedly did. His appearance here seems to use a model that's the exact same, or at least really similar, to the one seen in the then-recent 3D games. They even got Reno Romano to once again provide the voice, although it lacks his most memorable line. I'm already at full health. The Mune Academy series attempted to replicate Capcom's hyperfighting in 3D to mixed results. You can launch enemies, follow up with aerial raves and supers, and are given plenty of movement options. While the animation isn't nearly as fluid and as expressive, Spidey does have some neat tricks. He can flip and tumble, has lots of unique command normals, his air combos are performed while peeing upside down, and comes equipped with three supers, a multi-hitting combo which leads to a free air juggle, a kind of awkward counter parry super that rarely ever works, and finally a strike which leads to his opponent getting webbed up and stomped. While the Mune Academy games have aged poorly when compared to Capcom's efforts, it's clear the dev team at Paradox tried their best with Spidey, as evidenced by the amount of quips during his throws and windscreen, and the inclusion of the black suit, a nice little bonus. I have to give out about his ending though, uh, which is literally just a commercial for Enter Electro. Ah, that's so Activision. I believe some generic skeleton guy already covered Marvel vs. EA in a gameplay video and on his dumb what happened show, so don't really think I need to go into more detail on Rise of the Imperfects. So I won't. I gotta give you something though. So Spider-Man does appear in both vanilla and corrupted forms in Nemesis. Plays like how you would think in a janky 3D arena fighter, his super is straight out of MK vs. DC in terms of intensity and creativity, and finally was voiced by Alistair A. Bell, who has an extensive filmography, but who I know best as Simon from the SSX series, and who contributed to the Spider-Verse via this milestone quote. You know what we call that? We call that a web slinging ass kicking. Yeah, and that's Marvel Nemesis. Moving on, we have Spider-Man Friend or Foe. Now I know what some of you may say. That's not a button basher, you son of a- and you're right! But for those that are really, really big fans of friending and or foeing, well, you were quick to point out that I failed to mention this little versus mode that Next Level Games snuck in when I last covered this brawler a few months back. I'm gonna be honest. I just straight up forgot to mention it. My Matty sense was tingling just as I had clicked publish on that video, but I ignored it, as I often do. While Spider-Man's combat and level structure gets incredibly repetitive only about an hour into the campaign due to a confluence of factors, when you contain it within quick bouts against a buddy can actually be even more enjoyable. In fact, it can be so fun that you kinda wish they had expanded upon it with different victory stipulations, four player support, the ability to turn off or add more items into the arenas, and for the arenas themselves to be more fleshed out with additional gimmicks. Really makes me wish someone had made a whole ass dedicated Spider-Man arena or a platform fighter. I mean, the Ninja Turtles got one, so why not for the friendly neighborhood spider guy? Okay, so I bet you're all rubbing your eyes going, huh? What the hell is- oh wait, uh, no, no, I, I don't remember this one. 
Well, once THQ went belly up, their ambitious FPS co-op game based on Earth's Mightiest Heroes went with it. But the other, very different Avengers game Ubisoft had planned did release and wound up being one of the most forgettable Marvel titles ever made. This was a Wii U and Xbox 360 Connect exclusive and was a bizarre over-the-shoulder motion-controlled tag-based fighter where you select two heroes and go through mind-numbing fight after mind-numbing fight against the rest of the cast who are all conveniently green-colored now because they're scrolls, you see. As you'd expect, Spider-Man is here and he looks alright. It's just weird seeing this model because it, it makes no impression on one's brain. Brain. Like, you look at this and you go, wait, what is this from? Voice-wise, there is some familiarity, though, as the talented James Arnold Taylor, who played the wall crawler as well as a host of his nemesis in various other games and cartoons, and he does another great job here. There's no endings for any one character in this roster, just a big, boring, generic one, but I gotta give big ups to Ubisoft for aping Maximum Spider with this scintillating ultra move. The um, Battle for Earth is in stores now and is not recommended. Now, I've made this abundantly clear over the years that I don't fucks with mobile gaming, even during my downtime from ineffectively fighting crime. I don't care if it's franchises like Godzilla, Mortal Kombat, or Street Fighter. If your game looks like this, it's more than likely I won't be playing it, so I don't have a whole lot to say about Marvel's Mobile Fighter Contest of Champions. You tap the screen, canned animations play out, and you're hassled to pump more and more money into it, yada yada yada. Aside from my distaste for this type of business model and control interface, I wish at least that the super attacks were a bit more stylish and creative as it all just melds together into a flurry of generic web swings, punches, and kicks. If you've ever had fun with Contest of Champions yourself, well, more power to you, true believer, but it's just not my bag. Now, we only have a few games left as we return to the much greener pastures of Capcom, but there's somebody I know who has much deeper technical knowledge on the subject, and whose favorite fighting game character just so happens to be the Webbed Wonder. Mr. Justin Wong, what is up with Spidey in the legendary Marvel vs. Capcom 2? You know, Spider-Man is really cool in Marvel 2 because even though he was really broken and very popular in like the games you mentioned, like Marvel Super Heroes, Marvel Super Street Fighter, Marvel Capcom 1, they nerfed him quite a bit in Marvel 2. Like uh, his life, his, uh, his health is actually pretty low. He has like Akuma health. Like he's a glass cannon all of a sudden, right? But the thing is what he did get was the universal buff of canceling from, norm from uh, special moves into supers. Because if you think about the old games, you can never really combo into Maximum Spider, right? Unless you had like a, an assist in Mars Capcom 1, like Colossus, for example. But in Marvel 2, you can finally combo into his supers, right? You can combo into uh, Maximum Spider by using Spider Sting, which is really cool. Um, Crawler Assault, um, you can combo uh, from the Web Ball. And he also even had uh, the Spider Web Throw Super which was uh, pretty interesting uh, because it actually unscales damage. And I think with the whole team synergy, it worked really well with Spider-Man, especially with like other low tier assists, like Hulk, Hulk assist was really good with Spider-Man. And obviously Sentinel drones is always really, really good. Who doesn't really love Sentinel drones? Um, okay, uh, cool, cool, cool. But uh, I wanted to know what fighting game has your favorite version of the wall crawler? I would say that the Spider-Man that I really was super interested in was Marvel 3. Marvel 3 Spider-Man changed up the game so much. I felt like his personality came out so well with that because one, he finally had a real proper air dash while using like kind of like web ear zipping through the stage and everything. Kind of like how he zips through buildings and everything, right? So that was really cool. He had these web throw loops that you can just loop all day. So you even had the crowd like just chant, see you later, because he'll always say, see you later. So literally you have the crowd saying, see you later, see you later. And that was really fun as well too. And they finally made Spider-Man's web throw super and actually an actual throw super this time. It was never a throw super before, but now it was a throw super. So if you did get caught in the web, it's like a command grab, right? So they made him really cool with that one. Uh, Maximum Spider got a huge animation buff, um, which really puts you in the middle of the web. 
though, I really love the fact that Spider-Man just kept evolving just from the original, the beginning of time of Marvel Super Heroes all the way to just like Marvel 3, Marvel Infinite. And man, you know, I already told you, Matt, he's literally one of my favorite fighting game characters of all time because he just does what a spider can. Alrighty, thank you for that. Well, why don't you tell us about our last game, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite? Nah, I gotta get going, you know. I already mentioned Marvel Infinite already, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Well, aside from an uglier art style, there is honestly a very limited amount of things you can say about Infinite considering it reuses a lot of the same animations and supers from MVC3, but I'll try to be positive, at least for the sake of little Max here. Aww. In Infinite, Peter is voiced very well by Robbie Damon, who played the character in a few other random games as well as the most recent cartoon, and I love the line, with great power comes a great beatdown, which he sometimes yells during Maximum Spider. His new level 3 is also pretty decent, but it would have been nice if the Emerald Elf actually appeared during it. I also appreciate a lot of his colors and alt costumes, like Superior, the Negative Suit, and the Iron Spider. And while the story mode of Infinite is, uh the story mode of Infinite, Spidey is at least portrayed pretty well. He doesn't do anything too special, but he does interact with Mike Hagar, and that's something that I hold near and dear to my heart. As for his ending, he doesn't have an ending. If you'll recall, arcade ladder endings were cut from Infinite, which is just as well, because I don't think they could have topped Marvel 3's where Jonah imp <laughs> where Jonah implies that Spidey was in cahoots with Galactus. But yeah, that's Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite in a nutshell. It is certainly a game that exists, if only for that magical time where Spidey absolutely dominated the meta via his clever use of... Reality Stone! Reality Stone. Now, I know there's also Marvel Chaos, but that really doesn't count. And with that, my friends, concludes Spider-Man's fighting game history. I hope you enjoyed all the thrills, chills, and all the times I said Maximum Spider. And a big thanks goes out to the legendary Jay Wong for dropping some web-slinging knowledge on us, as well as all of you for voting for this episode. And remember, Excelsior, true believers, and I'll see you next time on the Mediocre Spider-Mat. <laughs>